Alright guys, welcome to the second tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be covering programming languages, the different types of programming languages that are available and also which which language is the best one to learn and which one should be the first one that you're going to learn. These questions will answer them at the end but we'll first start getting into you know the different languages available. So, why so many languages? You've probably heard of many languages before actually clicking onto this tutorial. I'm sure you've probably heard of you know Java, C, HTML, PHP, ASP. You've heard of all of these different languages, but you're you, I mean as a new as a beginner, you're probably thinking why are there so many languages? Well, first of all, it's important to understand computers are stupid, yeah. Computers they have no brains, but they have to be told exactly what to do exactly what to do. You tell a computer 1 plus 1, they'll do the calculation, they'll come out with 2. But if you tell them something and they don't, they do something which you did not expect, then it's most likely your fault. It's most likely a logical error that you've made on your behalf. We'll get more into that later on in, term, in the course, but for now just understand that whatever you tell a computer to do, they will do it. But they're stupid in the sense that if you don't tell them exactly what to do, they will not do what you expect them to do. Computers only understand machine code. So what do I mean by machine code? Well, machine code boils down to zeros and ones. Computers only understand zeros and ones. Now it sounds a bit peculiar. What do I actually mean by that? Well, in the olden days when the computers first came out and programmers used to program for these computers, they would have to write code in using zeros and ones. With zeros and ones, because this is the only language computers could understand. So that was very cumbersome, especially at the beginning. And imagine writing that now. I mean, that that's, that doesn't really exist today. We don't have that. But that was, I mean, at, right from the beginning, that was understandable. But later on, I mean, we, there was a need to develop a language. This is where the concept of the programming language come in, comes in. We need, we had to, uh, languages were developed so that we would be able to write instructions in a form that the computer could understand and that we could also understand. So we can't write zeros and ones, to put it simply. But at the same time, computers only understand zeros and ones. So how is it that we could actually bridge this gap between you know this twofold, this 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 problem that has taken place? Well, like I said, the concept of a programming language where we could actually write instructions, and you know the instructions we write in this programming language could be converted into machine code. So if we quickly look at the next slide, we for example, if you've heard the language of Java, the language to Java general purpose high level programming language, you write Java code, which is on the right hand side, the first box on the right. What happens with this code is that it goes through what is known as a compiler. Now this compiler takes every single line of code that you've written in your Java. It does its magic and then it converts it into machine code. Eventually, after all its magic that it does within a few split seconds, it converts it into machine code, which the computer can understand and execute. Now, the first few language, the first language that came out after, I mean, like I said, uh, you know, right at the beginning, when people would have to program for these computers in the early days, you would have to write machine code. Then there came assembly language, which was you know it was it was the next step you didn't have to write zeros and one you could actually use some f English some just slight but even that wasn't enough so we'll get on to more uh, more of that later but um, so why are there so many programming languages to, or to put it simply every programming language has a specific purpose every programming language should make it easier for us to program as the program as we like to program it should be easier easy for us to write these instructions imagine writing imagine you want to print a line onto a screen you don't want to have to write 20 30 40 lines of zeros and ones just to print out a string onto the screen you don't you don't want to do that and we don't have to do that gratefully today we don't have to do that okay so we have what's known as high level languages and these languages are languages which are general purpose you can use them to write anything and the first few languages that were um, developed at first were COBOL, Fortran, BASIC and Pascal. I'm sure you won't really deal with these languages um, but these general purpose languages could actually write anything we're talking about you write, being able to write accounting software, word processors, um, flight simulators, drivers and 
we have many more of these high level languages we also have java we have c we have c++ and these are all like these can all be used to write general purpose languages um the whole reason for the, uh, the reason why these were developed is that because obviously we understand that writing machine code was very difficult and even assembly language code was very difficult as well so we needed we needed so sort, of, sort of again we need to fix this problem and we have these high level languages that we, that are existent today and we use them today to write software <clears throat> so what other languages do we have? Well, we have high-level languages, which can be used to write, you know, all of these particular softwares that I mentioned. You can practically do anything with them. I mean, the Windows operating system, as I said, I'm not sure if I've said in the previous tutorial, but it was written completely in C. So um, that's how powerful these languages are. But you also have other programming languages. You have database programming languages. What is a database? Well, a database is basically an application that stores information and you ret you retrieve that information from that database now most businesses today most businesses today use databases they have a whole client base database stores all of their customers their details and we're talking about we're talking about their address phone number contact number and all of these database most i mean on mainframe computers on compute on for companies that store large amounts of data in the database you have this language that is most common and is frequently used today and it's called structured query language which is SQL and it's used to manipulate m large amounts of data on big mainframe computers you know massive computers so an example of this well for example when you log into Amazon how many customers has Amazon got I don't know but I know they've got many millions millions we're talking about millions and millions of customers now Amazon obviously have to store all of this information. They have to store all of the names of these customers, their related details, and we're talking about you know all the everything from credit cards to addresses to phone numbers, and this all needs to be stored on the database. But at the same time, when you log into Amazon, if you notice that it only takes five seconds, it only takes three five seconds depending on the internet connection, to for you for your information to actually be verified so what is the process well how does this actually work well you type in your login details you type in login details you click in the login button what happens your login details are sent to Amazon servers Amazon servers then query the database the database stored the database server which stores you know large amounts of data queries that finds to see if that you know your login details are correct if it matches and then returns the acknowledgement to you know ver say that yeah your login details do match and then logs you in and then creates a session and then you've got a session cookie for that as well so all of that happens within five seconds sql is a very powerful language and it can be a this is the reason why it is the lang the database program language that really does manipulate large amounts of data and does it very quickly very fast very efficiently so you have we've talked about high-level program languages. We've talked about database programming. You also have web programming. You know when you visit websites, for example, <coughs> your browser. Your browser is a piece of software. When you visit a website, your browser needs to be able to take a website and display it correctly. What do I mean by that? Well, every single website is written in some form of HTML, and this tells the browser how to display the web page. It's used to display the content on the web page, graphical elements. And this is how it was right at the beginning. You know, you could display text, and then you would visit a website. In the really early days, you didn't have graphics, you didn't even have images. You could just view text. But even that was a that was an, uh, a big achievement to be able to for 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 you know to actually visit a website and uh, have the dis uh, text displayed in your browser was a big achievement. I mean, in the olden days, now you have now you have much more than that you can actually display graphics and sound video etc but also you have even more than that you have all of these other languages that facilitate for interaction javascript xml php and php and css which css is used to color web pages to give it nice you know formatting and design php actually is a language that is used to add um, to get interacting with the user you know for example login pages you've seen everyone's logged in I'm sure you've logged into a page before whatever website it may be it might use some form of PHP or maybe ASP all of these languages actually facilitate for interaction so you know you're filling in forms etc 
So, after all of these, you've got high level languages, you've got database programming, you've got web programming, and you have many more. But I just wanted to give you a brief idea. Hopefully, I haven't bogged you down with too much information. So, you know, the two questions I asked that first, what other, or that, that I mentioned that first, what, the, what would be the best, first, best language to learn, and the first language to learn? <clears throat> okay, let's answer the first one. First language to learn. Well, like I said, every single language will actually utilize these concepts that I will be teaching throughout this course. So, it, this doesn't mean this question. The answer to this question doesn't mean that you know you should stop watching the videos. I'm not sort of advertising these videos. But I'm saying that you know the cons finish this course first, learn all the concepts, etc., and then ask yourself the question: What is the first language to learn? And it depends on your needs. Do you want to become a database programmer? Do you want to do you actually want to develop um, databases, or do you want to develop general purpose applications? If you want to ge develop general purpose applications, then you would use a high level program language. If you want to become a web developer, developing content management systems or websites, then you would go for HTML, PHP route. So it all depends on what you want to do. What is the best language to learn? Well, there is no best language. Every single language has a purpose. Every single language has a specific purpose, as I've already mentioned. So there is no best language to learn. So the more important question out of these two is, what is the first language to learn? If you want to go for the general purpose route, that you just want to create programs you know, that can do fancy things uh, at the beginning, but obviously at the same time, you don't want to be bogged down with too much information. You don't be. You don't have to learn C straight away. I mean, it's it will be too much for for a beginner at first. So you go. For, so after this course, I would recommend if you want to become a general purpose programmer or you want to take that route, then you learn Visual Basic. Visual Basic is very easy. Very. It's a very easy program language. The syntax is very easy. It's easy to pick up. And then afterwards, you, from Visual Basic, you can go into learning maybe Java or C, etc. If you want to become a web developer. Obviously, the first thing you would have to learn is HTML and then CSS, and then you can actually um, learn PHP and ASP, etc. Um, database is SQL, and database, if you go on websites, you would actually you find that Amazon, for example, they have their database, but at the same time, they've got a web page, and that web page allows login, so you must have some sort of, you know, you have some scripting language, we call it a scripting language there that um, allows interaction so you know these two things are hand in hand that you have SQL and then you have these scripting languages that form together to allow you to actually you know shop online so if you want to take that route then you would have to learn again SQL or one of these scripting languages as well on top of that database programming language so it all depends what you want to do at the end of the day um, but I would um, I would definitely I would definitely recommend if you want to become a general purpose programmer Visual Basic at first if you want to um, just um, do some sort of scripting, then you would, uh, I would say at first you learn HTML, learn CSS, and then maybe after that learn Python. Python is, a, is you know fairly new compared to Perl. It's much the syntax is much easier as well. But all of this it might sound very daunting at first. I'm firing throwing so many terms at you, but you know what? You know what? the main thing if you take anything from this tutorial today is that. You have many different programming languages. Each programming language has a specific purpose. Therefore, there is no best language to learn. And the first language to learn is completely dependent upon what you want to do as a programmer. That's all. If you take that from tutorial, then everything's fine. If you have any questions, you um, please do rate, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions or you know you have any suggestions, please do let me know. Visit the website, by the way, the blog. I have a blog um, of the up. I will be uploading content very soon, um, and I have been uploading for the past year. So do visit the blog if you can. It's pcbzorx.net. Thank you for your time, and see you later. Bye.